All right. Welcome to another great episode of the Black Equity Podcast. I am excited for this conversation. It's a long time coming. I have Ashley Ann on the line. She is a digital branding and consulting expert in the culture. Uh, She is, well, of course, she's going to tell you more about herself, but she's one of the fixtures in our culture that everybody in business needs to know. So Ashley, tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. Oh my God, you have me blushing and uh, I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) Welcome, welcome to the Black Equity Podcast. I love you guys. I love everything that Black Equity Podcast is doing. Um, You know, what they say, it takes a village and it takes a lot of us, you know, because of, I think, I think we're all aware of the history, right, for Black Americans inside of the United States. So there's just a lot of things that we have to battle against. And a lot of times we're trying to win in a system that honestly has been designed to oppress us. And so there's a lot of things that we're battling against, a lot of doors that we're opening, a lot of uh, secrets and information that they've been, and knowledge that they've been keeping from us, right? So it's, it's, it takes a lot of us to get out here and sound the, ha- sound the horns and just make sure, you know, we're taking care and we're being our brothers and our sisters keepers. So I love like everything that Black Equity Podcast does. So I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. For those who don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself, your company, and what you're doing on a daily basis. Okay, so the quick and dirty. I'm gonna run my resume real quick. Okay, do it, do it. <laughs> um, so basically, I've helped over seven thousand people make money with their social media accounts. Uh, over five hundred of my clients have created six figure incomes. I have one hundred and thirty six clients that have hit the seven figure mark in under twelve months. Ooh, ooh. Uh, with live streaming, I've helped over nine hundred clients, averaging between eight to twelve thousand dollars a month. 90 of those clients doing between 10 and $30,000 a month. In Instagram land, I have 38 clients right now that are making between 50 and $150,000 a month just from the gram. In LinkedIn, my clients average in between 17 and $28,000 a month. And in Facebook land, I have a few thousand clients that make in between 25 and 125,000. Um, and we do that primarily through like ads, return paths and funnels and stuff like that. And I try and teach as often as I can. When I first started live streaming, um, at the first two, two and a half years, I was on Periscope and I literally streamed every single day. Mm. Like I just never missed a day, but it was a lot easier then. And then it's just one of those things, you know, the more popular you get, the more opportunity that starts to come because I had been a woman behind the curtain for so many years. And my clients were really the people that were pushing me out. They were like, people need to, know you because you can help so many more people if we can put a face to who you are and so they kind of twisted my arm (laughs) and got me to got me to come out in the sunlight um and so i try and broadcast though even now at least like three times a week even when i'm traveling even when i'm on the road i'm just teaching everything i can about business about finances about um, how to start up every month. There's normally a theme and we'll stick in that series all month long. So some of the series may be anywhere from 25 to 30 broadcasts long because I'm taking you from the beginning all the way to the end. So you can get the, so you can actually get the steps that you need to be able to be successful. So uh, my tagline is I teach things that people charge hundreds of dollars for and thousands of dollars for, for the free 99. That's what I do. Now, okay, hold on. Let's let's we got to dive into this. I've been waiting a long time for this conversation. So, a a lot of what you do is free game. Yeah, yeah. I, the, but you, but you're, you're shifting people into uh, seven figure thinking, what really multi million dollar thinking. Yeah. But you're you're giving out a lot of free game. So, how do you get compensated? Okay, so I would tell all my clients, free 99 gets you paid 99. So by the time I was like 12 or 13, I realized that people kept giving me stuff because I was nice. I wasn't trying to be nice to get something. I'm just genuinely a nice person. I'm country. I grew up on a farm. Um, You know, we had like a big old 
go garden, like we go pick up an egg, like I'm country, country, like grew up in a trailer. <laughs> so um, anyways, in country people, I guess they just ingrain it in us, you know, you be nice to everyone and everyone I know this country, we make friends everywhere we go. Right. And so when you move into a city, you realize a lot of those people don't have that type of mentality or maybe they weren't taught to connect like that. So it makes you being country or, you know, being a people person, it just makes you stand out. And then because you're naturally helpful and you have this attitude of like, let's just get it done. All of a sudden people would be like, well, let me give you this. Let me buy you this. And I was like, this is crazy. But I would sit and I would watch and observe people's behaviors. And I'm like, oh, there aren't so many people that are just willing to give freely, you know, whatever it is or give without any type of strings attached. So that's when I learned honestly, and I've kept it with me for so long, that free 99 leads to pay 99. Then it was reaffirmed when I was like 16. My first job, I worked at a Taco Bell KFC in the drive-thru. Watch and out I was, now. <laughs> yes, honey, I, I could work it. I, I had it down. I, I could be everywhere in the store and still take your order and tell you how much it was. It never got backed up. But people would come through the drive-thru and they would give me tips. And all the people I work with, they were like, how the hell are you getting tips in the drive-thru? And people would always say, oh, you're just so nice. You're so nice. You're so nice. So that always stuck with me. And that's immediately when I made the connection that in business, there could be 100,000 people that do the same thing. But one, no one can do it like you. Number two, if you make people feel valued and appreciated, um, they are going to value and appreciate you. They will come looking for you because they like the way that you made them feel. So those are some really important lessons that I learned, you know, just from being in the drive through. Um, and so I was able to translate that into compensation. I teach for free, but if you want the replays, then you got to purchase the replay, right? Because I feel like if I'm teaching you for free, the least you can do is get up and show up when I'm there. Um, if you want to get more information or get more involved, or you want me to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, or, you know, you want a consultation or audit or something, anything that's on one-to-one -one or customized, you know, that rolls over into the pay 99, because there's no way for me to customize things for a thousand people or 10,000 people in a day. So I'll put a premium on those sorts of types of things. Um, if it's something that, for instance, like a course that's 12 or 13 weeks worth of knowledge, hey, you can come out here, you can get this for the free side, and I'm going to give you something that's actually going to help you make money and help you build your brand or help you establish your product. But if you want to get deeper involved or you want the sustainable system, then just come over into this course. So for me, I learned that by just genuinely being a given person, a lot of people, you establish yourself as a resource, first of all, and then people want to work with you. So literally, I'm not in the position you know, that I have to be out here like begging people to purchase something. Like literally every day, there are hundreds of people inside of our DMs and inside of the inboxes saying, what can I buy from you? Yeah. So I try and tell people all, that t all the time, free 99 is not free. It's actually marketing and advertising. Same way you would pay for a billboard, it's the same thing. Except for you're not having to put any money out. Your trade-off is the time. Okay. So I, I'm understanding that. And, and later in this episode, I want to uh, let people know how they can get plugged in to the, to the free side of things so they can get all the free information. But before we get to that, how did you get into the digital space? You, you're working at uh, KFC. You got the tacos flying left and right. How did you get into the digital space? Okay, so I went off, you know, like all good people, you go to college because that's what your parents tell you to do, right? Go right, right. Make something of yourself, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm in my, I'm working my little corporate job and by now I'm in my master's program. And I had this professor, Dr. Dunn Bradley, old white guy. Um, but he took a liking to me, you know, and so, and I guess because I would listen, you know, I've always been a good listener. I'm a good student. And um, I was always interested in whatever this guy had to teach me. And if he was so funny, um, he would stand up in front of the class and he would pull a big, huge wad of cash out of his pocket and he'd slam it down on the table and he'd go, cash is king. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And if you got cash, you can get whatever you need. Um, mm. And he was like, and the best way to get cash is running your own business. And just That's something about it just, I was like, oh, it's like that makes sense to me. Mm. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't really debate it. I didn't really question it. You know how sometimes I guess if your soul or your spirit, here's, here's the truth. It yeah. knows it's the truth. Right. Um, and so I've always, I, I got a bunch of talents, but I have three, three very specific 
specific gifts that God gave to me. I have gifts of musician, I have the gifts of hospitality, and I have the gifts of business. So my whole life, and uh, this is for a lot of people, anybody that's listening to this, a lot of the things that you can make money in, you do it naturally. You've been doing it your whole life for everyone around you. So my whole life, everyone in my family, if they were having a party, if they were decorating their new apartment, if they needed help designing their house, they would all call me, all my cousins, friends, family members, and then eventually like a coworker asked somebody else, and then somebody else asked somebody else, and then finally somebody was like, well, what are you going to charge me? I'm like, whatever you want to give me, right? And they gave me a $500 tip. And she told wow. me, she said, she said, I know this is not enough to compensate you for what you did, but this is all I have on me right now. And later she sent me another $2,000. So that's when the alarm went off in my head and I was like, oh, I can get paid to make stuff look pretty. And that was just something I had been doing my whole life. I'd always been drawing, painting, art competitions. My mom would let me cover my bedroom wall with craft paper and I'd draw murals on the wall. I leave it up for a month. I take it down, start all over. I was always rearranging the room. Like I just, that's like a thing that is in me, like naturally ingrained. And so I was like, oh, I can make money with this. So sitting inside of Dr. Dunn Bradley's class, I was like, huh, he, he made us put together a business plan, a feasibility study. He made us go out and do the market research. And I said, well, if I did all this, I may as well try it. And so that's what made me launch off into the event design and production company, um, which is still running. It's okay. events by Ashley Ann. I started with $125 in my laptop and I've grown it into a multi-million dollar company, which is crazy because Beautiful. it's like unheard of for the event industry to be able to do that. And then at the time I was like 20, turning 21 when I started. But so for some young black girl to get out here in, you know, in the streets with all these other people in an industry that's dominated by Caucasian people and they were like where did she come from like what is going on and how is she able to get all these clients so through the event company is actually how I learned that I had the knack for social media monetization um, and funnels and things like that because then my colleagues they will start being like how are you booking these clients how can you get these budgets so high um, at the time, the average budget for a wedding was like $15,000 and clients were spending on average between 28 and 32. Wow. So I was wow. way above the industry average. So that made me, gave me the ability to produce better events, which of course, in turn, I was able to attract higher paying client after higher right. paying client. But they were all like, how are you doing this? Because we can't get these people to spend this money. And I realized you know, that it was because of my social skills. A lot of them were still doing traditional marketing and I had switched over to social media marketing. And this is before content marketing had a name, before, you know, there was attraction marketing and all this other stuff. I was just, you know, being helpful. I was giving people tips. I was showing them the lab. I would ask them what they think about some of my new designs. And um, I kept having colleagues come and ask. And there was this one particular lady. She would blow me up. I mean, just nonstop. And finally, one day I asked her, and she had a business coach that she was paying $5,000 a month to, to this particular business coach. And one day she, I finally asked her, I said, why do you keep asking me stuff? Go ask your business coach. And she said, well, because everything you tell me works. Wow. And that's when I was like, oh, I can, cons I can consult. Mm -hmm. So then I had been event designing and planning for like three years then. And that's when I opened up the consulting firm and I really was doing more so of like ads management for right. people. Um, and then, you know, you're trying to educate yourself. So I kept going to all these classes and courses and webinars and workshops. And I'll be honest, I was getting um, discouraged because they all had these humongous lists that were like, oh, I have 500,000 people on my list. I have 2 million people on my list. And I, I didn't even have 2,000 people on my list. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be four forever. This is never going to work. So anyway, but something in me was like fire off an email. I sent an email to my little list and I made $17,000 and some change back like that. Okay, hold, like, on, hold on, hold on now. What did <laughs> you have in this email? What, what was you selling? It was, it was. It, KFC? It, no, it was just, a, it was no chicken, no tacos, <laughs> no tacos, no chicken. It was just a regular email, you know, talking about my services and, you know, mm. I gave them a couple tips and made an offer for you know a consultation and then yeah. i had like a little bribe box that they could buy so okay. after that i was like well, it was probably a fluke because i'm big into numbers and statistics and stuff like that and um i tried it again did about twelve thousand. wow i was like oh hold on now 
I was like, okay. And I'm, I'm a stats number person. So I called five of my friends. I was like, hey, y'all, I think I know how you can make some money. And it's legal. And I was like, you just got to do everything. <laughs> it's legal. It's legal. Because, I mean, so honestly, if you think about it, I make better returns than a dope man. You know right. what I'm saying? A lot of us in digital marketing is legal. And we are out here, like, flipping this money, like, crazy. You know, to be able to sit in your living room and make $100,000 in a week, that's nuts. You know, right. like, when you think about it, that's insane. Um, so I was like, y'all do everything I tell you to do. And so anyway, one by one, everybody was getting money, 25,000, 8,000, 11,000. And that's when the light bulb went off for me. I said, okay, I know something that none of these other gurus know. I know something that none of these other people know. It is about targeting. And I know how to build a targeted list and I know how to create a product that they like and send it to them. And so just like that, that's when I really, like my business really went like, kaboom because I could get people these results and they didn't have um they didn't have to do all of these you know almost seemingly impossible things so I switched my business models immediately from mass marketing to target marketing and is the rest has been history ever since let's talk about that real quick for those who don't know what the difference is can you, in, in a nutshell, explain mass marketing, target marketing for someone who's just entering into the business space? Yeah, so mass marketing is what most of us are taught. That's what you see big companies like Coca-Cola and Walmart doing. They are everywhere. This is where they teach you to be on every TV channel, every mailer, every billboard, sponsoring all kinds of events. Like you're supposed to be everywhere, right? And in the hopes that if someone needs your service or product, that they will think about you and they will remember you and they will come to your store or go online and order your stuff. When you are target marketing, we're not trying to get to 200,000 or 100,000 people or even 10,000 people. We're just looking for 10 or 20, you know what I'm saying? Then eventually you can expand that to 100 or 1,000, but we're just looking for a very small segment of the population who wants to hear the information that you're sharing. That's it. So it's like if someone said, do you want to be on this stage in front of an arena in front of 100,000 people and they don't know you and kind of don't really care what you have to say or would you rather be in this room with 100 people but all 100 of these people care about starting an online business? Put me in the room with 100 people. That's where right. I want to be, right? Because there's a higher propensity that they're going to want to work with me or purchase a product from me because they already have an interest. So whenever I start speaking, they're going to listen and they're going to engage with me. So the beautiful thing about social media, and we know social media has its bad parts too, you know, like mm -hmm. the trolls and all that kind of stuff, but it gives you every single person the ability to target market. You're able to build mm. up your own community. You're able to talk to your little niches, your subsets of people and start creating relationships with them and then, you know, give them valuable content. And if there's a product or service you have that correlates with it, they want to buy it because they built the relationship with you or with your company. So it's a beautiful thing. And a lot of really large companies don't have the ability to target like that. That's why they participate in influencer marketing because they know that the influencers have relationships with their base and with their audiences that they don't have the ability to, you know, generate. So you, you build this, this, you're entering into this space, you're realizing it's working. Um, how soon do people start flocking to you and saying, oh my goodness, it, it, you know, how do I learn, you know, this from you? What is the, the, the secret sauce? I think it probably took me, when I started, when I was doing, you know, like door to door foot traffic, just as far as I could get in my geographic, geographical location, I always did pretty well with clients. I would keep about 10 clients at a time that would pay me $3,000 each. So that's a pretty good hustle. Those yes, years, I like that. I like that. I make about 30000 a month. And I was cool with that. <laughs> and, I still, and I still have my event design and production, you know, clients too. So I was, in my word, I was like, oh, I was like, girl, you, you doing good. Um, but you know how it's that thing, you always know you can do better. <laughs> um, and I wasn't, and it wasn't so much that I was trying to increase my income. I started wanting to, get back more of my time and not be working so much. So I started live streaming. And what made me start live streaming, I just kept going to stream after stream, course after course, webinar after webinar. And there were all these people giving out trash bag information. Yes. But, and I would see the people in the streams like 
eating it up you know oh my god this is what i've been looking for i've been praying for this and i'm like they just gave you a map to the god toilet excuse me i almost right. they gave you a map to a toilet but because they knew that you don't know any better they were taking advantage of people so i was just like you know i should do something about this and i was like i'm not gonna file a complaint i'm not gonna troll them i'm just gonna start broadcasting i'm just gonna i'm just gonna put my face on the camera and i'm gonna start teaching and whoever wants to show up can learn that that literally does the whole motivation um it took me probably like two months to get to about a thousand you know subscribers this is over on periscope mm -hmm. um and i will say a good year in before i hit like no i'm lying it was probably like six or seven months before i got to around the two thousand person mark mm -hmm. and i remember i i did a sale and i made a little bit over seventeen thousand dollars in under three days Nice. And that's when a lot of people started looking at me because at the time there were other people on the platform who had 100,000, 200,000, you know, followers and they couldn't figure out how to monetize it. And they were like, what, like, what is this woman doing? So I kept building my audience, but I reached out to 12 people on Periscope. They had audiences that ranged anywhere from 5,000, you know, up to a hundred thousand. And I was like, I can, I can help you make money with this platform. You gotta do exactly what I tell you to do. But in exchange, when I get done for the next six months, anytime I go live, you have to come into my broadcast and share. If you see me in yours, you gotta shout me out and make sure people know that I was your business coach, that you went through my program. I said, and, and I was like, and that's it. They were like, that's it? I said, that's it. And they were like, why? And I was like, because I, I was like, I'm gonna have a portfolio built. And essentially you're endorsing me. So more people are gonna wanna come into my program. So I built up for probably like another six or seven months after that. I got all of them making money anywhere from 3000 to $25,000 a month using that platform. And then I introduced my live stream to Profit Stream Academy there. And it sold out in the first hour and I did a hundred and something thousand dollars. Like just like that from it selling out, from being mm, dedicated, mm, mm. being diligent and being willing to work for free and build up my portfolio. A lot of people are really short-sighted. They don't want to put in the work, but I didn't mind it. I knew I was good at what I did. So I'm like, my reward is gonna come. And so by then I had grown from like 2,500 something followers. I think I had like 10 or 11,000 or something. And then after the word got out about that, I started doing all these series on how you monetize and this and this and that. And I went from like eight, I went from like 10,000 to like 16,000 people in one week. And then the next week I went up to like 25. Um, and then I went to like 30 or something. It was, it was nuts. It was just like, boom, boom, boom. Like, just like that. It's beautiful. There's a couple things there that, that, that stick out to me. First, it's this idea of relational equity. Uh, having relationships with people and trusting each other and um, leveraging each other's audiences in order to get to where you need to. Uh, but then you also said w what you noticed out there was um, trash information, just to be yeah. frank. And you were going to give real information. How do people that are listening to uh, this episode and they're out there looking, obviously they're going to realize that you, you are the real, but how do you tell the difference between a real $100 bill and a fake one? How, how can you tell that difference in the digital space? I think the first thing is looking for receipts. Um, any of us that are good at what we do, we work so hard, we're proud to show you our testimonials. We're proud to show you our receipts. Um, if someone cops an attitude with you or gets real spanked with you <laughs> um, because they don't have any receipts and you ask them for referrals, that should be your first red flag. Because when people ask me for receipts, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, click the highlights, you know, inside of my gram or go to this website or look up and down my page because I have them right all over the place. Um, so I think one, looking for receipts. Um, number two, I, you need to, anybody in the digital space, we always have some type of free ebook, a class, a course, we're live streaming, a webinar, there's something that we're doing for free. We all have a lead magnet because we know we have to establish a relationship with you, right? We know we have to like have some type of opportunity to show you like I can do what I can do. So go to some of those free classes and courses, take advantage of the free stuff. I tell my people all the time, I have like, I always have at least five or six free courses at any given time take us up on the free stuff come to our live streams come to our webinars get that ebook get the checklist whatever and use the information if you get some results from the information then that's a normally a really good indication 
position that, you know, you're going to be in safe hands. The second thing is then at that point, purchase a small product, like one of the tripwires or a low cost product. Um, the worst, and I hear these stories like at least two or three times a week, someone has spent thousands of dollars with somebody and they scammed them. They didn't get anything from it. So purchase a smaller product first so you can see if you like the teaching style. Um, you can see if they really give you what they tell you they will give you or was it just a bunch of smoke and mirrors and then you got in there and it was nothing. Um, I think if you do those things first, you'll be pretty safe. Um, and of course, if they have all these testimonials floating around of people, you know, you can pull up in any of their people's inboxes. You can ask them during their lives. You can, you know, go to their um, go to their pages and say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about working with a King Ashley Ann. I saw, you know, you're one of her clients. Can you tell me how was your experience with her? You know, blah, 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 blah. And so then those people, if they're like, what, who are you talking about? Well, we already know because <laughs> that's happened before. Right. You know, people, people make fake uh, receipts and fake testimonials. So if they're like, what, who, who are you talking about? What is that? You already know, leave it alone. But most people are going to say, oh yeah, I worked with them and you know, I got great results or, you know, I feel however I felt about them. But normally if you're doing that, you're going to be okay. But the biggest thing is look for receipts. Like all of us have people, we have a portfolio. There is somebody that can attest to say, we can do what we're really telling you that we can do. If you can't find a receipt, don't do it. I agree. Now you, you said something, I got to touch on it. You said King Ashley Ann. Where does this name come from? Tell me the King story. I need to know. Okay. So um, my, my handle name for a long time was Ashley Ann Speaks. And of course I okay. have the events by Ashley Ann handle for the event design and production company. And um, something in me was like, you know, you need to rebrand. You're about to grow. I don't know if that was like God talking to me or something. I don't know, but I was like, okay. And I start throwing out different names and none of them would speak. And I actually tried like Queen Ashley Ann and I never changed it. I like, it just does not fit. And then like, I was watching, um, I was watching a movie and like, there was a King that came on the screen and um, like, they were like King and right then my sister was like Ashley Ann. So mm -hmm. it was like all at one time. And I was like, right. Ooh. I was like, that sound all right. And then I asked my sister, she was like, I like it. She was like, it sounds good. It's a good fit for you. So then I went and started, I'm big into words and stuff. So I went and I looked at uh, words and numbers. Those are my thing. So I went and I started looking up the definitions and I wanted to know more of the history about king and queen and where the titles came from and what they meant and stuff. And when you look up the definition of queen, like not the westernized definition, the de definition that's all over the world, everywhere is when you look up the definition of queen, it actually is a title that holds no power. Mm. It's a title used to describe the wife of a king, but the title holds no power. So oh, say that again. Me. Please say that again. Yeah, it's a it's a title that's used to describe the wife of a king, but it is a position that holds no power. So technically I could be a king and a queen mm. at the same time. <laughs> that's so <laughs> powerful. And when you look up the definition of a king, mm -hmm. it actually is a position of power, of dominion, and of rulership. And I was like, that's right. I, I run dominion over everything in my life. And I was like, I like that. I'm not afraid of my power because I had went through this weird few years in my life where I was totally the opposite. I call it my bankruptcy period. And I had bad friends. I had a bad relationship. I had bad health, anything you could think, bad finances. Everything was just trash. Like in my life, for real, for real, my whole life, it was all just trash. Um, and so I knew I wanted to come out of that. I had been working out of that. I had finally gotten to a place where I felt good with everything. And so, um, I kept researching about Kings and I realized in Africa, there were actually female Kings. Mm. And I was just like, I did oh. not know that. Yes. And then I learned about King Peggy and I was like, Oh, and I watched this whole documentary about her and kept researching her and stuff. And I was like, well, dang, I was like, that's really dope. And then I started going all the way back even to the pharaohs. And there were female pharaohs. And the pharaoh is a title, right? The position of power. They didn't have different names for them. A gotcha. pharaoh was a pharaoh, whether you were a male or a woman. Um, almost like if Hillary would have became the president, it would have been president. It's the position. So I was just like, I feel comfortable with King Ashley Ann. And so once I changed my name and I started doing stuff, of course, you know, it was mixed reviews and I get backlash to this day. 
you're a woman, da 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 da. God didn't call you to be a man. I'm like, I'm not trying to be a man. This is just my position of power, you know, and I know that I'm powerful in the realm of finances, in the realm of education, in the realm of business. And so if you got a problem with it, you know, I'm I'm not for you. Keep it going, right. keep it pushing. Just like right. that. So yeah, so but that's how uh the name King Ashley Ann came about. Thank you. We we've all been waiting for that story. <laughs> And so we definitely appreciate that. You, you said, you know, hey, I'm, I'm ruler over this. I have power over this. What is it exactly that you would say that you teach? Uh, when somebody comes to your Instagram or comes to your, to your world, what are they going to pick up? What is the one or two things that right away they're going to pick up uh, as far as wisdom in, in, particular, in, in, in business or finances? Tap it into your inner power. Um, like I said, I have a lot of talents. I got my three specific gifts, but all of it boils down to my purpose and my purpose on the planet. I'm a manifester. I just happen to manifest in the areas of money and finance. Right. But that even breaks down to being able to help somebody's dream come true. Because if I can help you gain financial security and stability, then you don't have to worry about keeping a roof over your head or what your kids are going to eat. And so now you have the freedom to actually walk in your purpose as well. And if you can make money doing things that you love to do, you're going to be happy when you go to work and you're going to spread that happiness to other people instead of waking up every day and being miserable because you have to go spend eight hours on something that you consider a slave ship or a plantation. So um, just being able to tap into your own power of who you are is probably the biggest thing um, that a lot of my clients tell me that they get from me and a lot of the audience members. Um, and I think the second thing is just understanding that no matter how big your vision is, how big your goal is, it can be accomplished. So creating a systematic way to be able to get you from where you are right now to where you want to be. Got you. Um, do you think this is just a personal question of mine? You can choose to answer or choose not to answer. Do you think you've been ignored by uh, these black platforms out there that are hosted by men that uh, bring on men to talk about some of the same content that you have, but yet a lot of what they have to offer is trash because I've bought a lot of their stuff. I I was, uh, I was hoodwinked. Um, Do you, do you take any offense to that or do you, have you even noticed it? Don't even worry about the offense part. Have you noticed that people have ignored you? Um, There are definitely a lot of people that ignore me. And I just know at the end of the day, either you're intimidated by somebody or you're inspired by them. Mm. But to me, it doesn't matter because I'm still going to get to where I'm going to get to. There's nothing that anyone can do on the planet Earth to keep me from anything that God has for me. Period. I may have to go on another path. I may have to jump through another window. I may have to roll, you know, underneath another door or dig in a trench. But at the end of the day, if it's something that he has for me, the only person that can stop me from getting that is myself. So, you know, I notice it, but I just don't take offense. I'm like, whatever, you know, right. you still going to see me over here. There's nothing you can do to stop me. And there definitely is always funny because I'll get these opportunities that come to me later. Mm-hmm. And I may have thought it was going to come, you know, with this one person or through this different Avenue. And then you meet them and it's like, want, want disappointment. <laughs> right. <laughs> want, want, want. Um, but then at the end of the day, it still rolls around right. however it's supposed to roll around and it comes from a totally different angle. So I'm very confident and I hope everybody that's listening, you know, to this understands whatever it is that you're supposed to have, you're going to get it. No one can stop you from it. Nobody. You can delay yourself. You may slow yourself down, but you're going to get whatever it is you're supposed to have. Something else that's coming to my mind as we're talking about this, we're in the middle of this so-called quarantine uh, situation. (sighs) Do you think a lot of your strategies and your tactics and, and, uh, your game plan, your blueprint, do you think it's recession proof? I don't, I'm not going to say it's recession proof, but I have, I have a strong, a strong sense of confidence in it because when I opened up my event design and production company, it was in the middle of a recession. Right. And I, and I was able to make it, but everything says every the world and all the statistics and everything logically said I wasn't supposed to be able to make it right um so and I was able to um I with this particular thing that's happening my clients that are practicing the digital 
digital strategies that I've been teaching, they're doing great. Their businesses aren't hurting at all. Um, we were quick to pivot to show them how to find other ways to make money, to connect with their audience, to not slow up the cash flow. Um, and then I'm, all, I'm always a big proponent. I don't care if you have a physical product, if you have a brick and mortar, you know, if you're a service provider, I've always been big on having my clients have digital products. So we just ramped up on that side. Um, so for what's going on right now, all these people at home, it's excellent. Um, anybody that's thinking about starting something, it's a good time. I, I know you think that it's not from watching the news, but it is. The more people that retreat, that means there's more out there for you to get. Um, and because you have so many people that are at home and they're listening to podcasts and they're watching us online and they're looking through YouTube and those sorts of types of things, this is an opportunity that you will almost never get again to be able to build a long lasting relationship with your audience. It's not even about trying to sell them something right now, just getting in front of them, showing yourself approved getting to know them, letting them get to know you and building an actual relationship because this is one of the few times ever you could go live every day, two or three times a day and you're always going to have an audience. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're always going to have the ability to connect, right. connect with someone. And if you can answer a question for them, if you can solve a problem, if you can make them feel good, anything like that, that's how you build long lasting customers and clients. So do you think this, that when you're uh, practicing uh, in the digital space or uh, implementing these strategies, it's for really any sector. The digital side is just the, the vehicle that you're using to get to the target audience. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, it's just a marketing channel. The same way okay. that TV or billboard or radio is a marketing channel, your social media is the same thing. The important part is that you're actually building your list. Um, where I see a lot of people misstep is that they just, they focus on trying to be popular and popularity does not equate to prosperity. There are people out here who have 3 million plus followers, y'all, and they're sleeping on an air mattress. And I know this for a fact because they come to me for help. Um, and I have clients who don't even have 2,000 followers and they're making $100,000 a year from Instagram or from Facebook, you know, or LinkedIn. So it's that list building with the targeting, that's what the key is. Because whenever you post on social media, now, um, back in the day when it was just a chronological timeline, you would post and anybody that followed you would see it, right? It's not like that anymore. Um, they have all kinds of artificial intelligence that's working. They're, they're looking at your posts compared to other posts that your followers have liked or commented on or shared, um, depending on how many people like and how much rich text you get. And rich text is four comments or more. So that's why it's important to be in the comment section and actually have conversations with people and not just be dropping emojis. Um, but how much rich text can you get in an hour? How many people liked it? Like then they're going to say, okay, well, we'll show this to instead of 10% of our audience, we'll show this to 15%. And now we'll show it to 25 and 35%, depending, right, how much engagement you're getting. So it's a total, totally different game. You could post something and somebody may not see it for three or four days because it, because for the last two days, they were watching hair videos and you put out a fitness video. Um, doesn't mean that, that, that your audience member didn't like your content, like Facebook or Instagram literally moved it. <laughs> if you're in right. YouTube, you don't have the right keyword set up. So you're, you know, playing in the correct suggested video thread. Uh, you, you're not going to get no play. It is, it is what it is. Um, so this is why it's important to build the list. Also, what if your account gets hacked? You know, what if Facebook or Instagram or YouTube crash? That's happened a few times last year and people were like losing their mind. I wouldn't, as, even, stress, I wouldn't even stress it out. <laughs> as we're talking uh, earlier today, YouTube went down. Yeah, yeah. And so if you have this list, you can still email your people. You can still text your people. You can meet with them, you know, inside of a Zoom room or a free conference call or, you know, go to meeting or something. You still have ways to be able to connect with your audience. So the list is like the major thing with social media. Your, your daily post is really relationship building and establishing yourself as a resource. But the list is like where your money is. That's how you build up your audiences. That's how you sell your products. That's how you get people to show up to your live events, come into your store, all of those sorts of types of things. Now, when you say list, I know what you're talking about, but you're referring to email marketing, right? Email and text. And I, I'm not going to lie. I like text more than I like email. Me too. Um, email doesn't necessarily have the high 
highest open rate. And that's because all these filters like Google and Yahoo and stuff have put in place, right? So if I email you, and let's say only 50% of my emails even made it to the inbox, right? And right. then only somewhere between 25 and 35% of people open it. But I think the industry standard is like, 10, is it 10 or 11 or something? It's 10, 10 or 11, right. which is what you're supposed to expect. So if you're 25 to 35, you're higher than normal. Come come fool with us in the kingdom. I'll get you there. Okay. We'll be it. I'm on my way. <laughs> but... but um, that's still all of these other people. So let's just say for the sake of round numbers, you got a thousand people on your list. That means only 250 just saw your message. Mm. You still got a whole, right? We, we still got all these other people. We still got a whole 750 people out there that didn't, didn't get to talk to us, didn't right. know what I said. So with a text message, because especially shout out to all the millennials and hey y'all <laughs> um we have our phones with us constantly it's probably right. not the healthiest thing but a lot of us have our phones with us all the time the bounce rate is really low and like the actual uh the actual delivery rate is closer to somewhere in between 85 and 90 percent so that means if i text a thousand people at least 900 of them got it and probably somewhere in between like 600 and 700 people actually opened the text and saw my message. So therefore, there's a greater return that comes in through text. So I can have a text list with maybe 3,000 people on it and send a text message. And let's say it's a $27 product and I may make $1,300. I may have had an email list and I could have emailed 10,000 people and I still would have only got $1,300 just because of the differences in the bounce rates and the open rate in delivery. Now, as a infopreneur, uh, for, for those who aren't entrepreneurs yet, what type of products can I build out that can be worth $2,000, $3,000? What, what kind of things can I put yeah. in the universe? So much stuff. Um, ebooks, okay. sound and audio files, any type of training that you want to give a tutorial on. Um, people love tutorials. They like to be, I, I love tutorials. I love to be able to look at something, pause it, and then turn around and do the next step and play it, pause it, do the next step. So people love tutorials, um, any type of course or class, and you want to drip content out and turn it into like an academy or something. Um, you can offer consulting services for your clients, softwares, graphics. Um, you can do virtual assistant services for people. Uh, like I can keep going like you, like you would be amazed <laughs> with what you can create. Um, and what you have to remember is that just because you know it and it's common knowledge to you doesn't mean it's common knowledge to everyone else, right? And so there are millions of people on the planet Earth. We want to know what you know. We want to be able to do it the way you do it. Right. That's dope. That's dope. Uh, so we can be in any industry. So we've knocked that barrier out of the way. We can uh, use any type of medium, whether it be a course, ebook, audio. Is there any type of limitations out there that's stopping someone from getting into this space and mastering digital marketing and digital strategy? Themselves, <laughs> like literally themselves, because um, like for instance, live streaming, um, getting in front of the camera, that's one of the quickest ways to build up an audience and to start making money. I have clients that literally come to me making $0 a month. And by the time we get done live streaming in six to eight weeks, they're making in between six and 8,000. Mm. They, they, you don't have to pay for an ad. You don't need any fancy equipment. All you need is your phone and your tablet, you know, prop it up on some boxes or some books and, you know, get in there and show your stuff. Right. Um, but people are so afraid because they're, so worried about internet trolls or they have these insecurities. And I'm like, at the end of the day, nobody cares about a troll. Empty wagons make the most noise. We don't care. Right. Um, you know, block them. <laughs> Continue on about your business. Um, I always tell, I always use the example of the Kardashians. Like in the media, right? Every, they're like, oh, everyone hates the Kardashians. But that's a lie. Everything those girls put out, they're flying off the shelves. They're making millions and millions and millions of dollars. They say, even though their viewership has dropped, they still have millions of viewers, you know, on their show. So people are sitting here saying, oh, everybody hates them. Obviously somebody loves them. So you have to, you have to keep in your mind when you're getting this critique, you know, sometimes that's just the enemy trying to stop you or trying to make you feel insecure, you know, and remove you away from whatever it is that you're supposed to have. But that's the biggest thing. 
thing is just honestly people getting past themselves. Now, have you seen uh, recently uh, Netflix uh, has dropped this Madam C.J. Walker uh, show uh, for the culture? Have you had a chance to uh, uh, see it or heard heard anything about it? I've heard a lot about it. I plan on watching it on Monday. I've been okay. really busy <laughs> because of everything going on with the Corona crisis um, is giving me an influx in clientele, and a lot of people, like a lot of the current clients I have, they like want to work with me more. They're wanting to pick up their packages. I have a lot of new clients coming in. So um, it's a blessing, you know, but I've been swamped. Um, so I plan on watching it Monday because okay. that's my off day. Um, I know one of the biggest things I saw about it, they were saying there were a lot of um, um, falsities mm-hmm. and some of the portrayals weren't quite true like them even flipping down like to the texture of someone's hair and making Mm -hmm. one of the other characters light skin and, you know, pitting her and Madam C.J. Walker against one another, you know, when it actually, historically, if you look at any of the data, they say, you know, they actually supported one another quite a bit. So, um, like I said, I haven't watched it yet, but I've definitely seen a lot going around about that. And then I see the other side, people saying, oh my God, I'm learning so many, many lessons. This is so amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm so happy that, you know, black women are being highlighted in a, in a positive light. So I don't, I don't know. Like I, I've seen a mixed bag of reviews. Well, I definitely respect her tenacity. At least when I say her, I'm talking about the character that they are portraying. I don't know what actually happened. I love her tenacity to go out and become uh, a millionaire and to uh, change the landscape for black women everywhere. I'm wondering though, um, why the portrayal was that her enemies, and you'll see this on Monday when you watch it, why her greatest enemies appear to be black men. When you're living in a time where there's no way that could be your biggest enemy. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry to cut you off. Why would you answer this now? We could have spent the whole time talking about this. Okay, so I you can always come back. But keep going. Yes. Okay, so okay, I'm trying to make it quick. So okay. I feel that there is this underlying push in this narrative to destroy the black household and the black relationship in the black family by the powers that be. I'm not trying to sound like a conspiracy theorist. Again, I have a part of being a business builder. You have the gift of observation and I'm able to see things and look past things that other people are not necessarily picking up on. Even if you look in the commercials on television, you will notice more and more that they are pairing. And let me get this out here. I don't think there's anything wrong with interracial relationships. I, I think it's perfectly fine to love who you love. If any of you guys have ever seen me, you can obviously tell I'm not 100%, you know, African, right? Uh, shout out, but I got that good African DNA, all right? <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the South. They say, if you got a drop, you the nigger. That's what they right, say. Right, right, right. Okay, so, <laughs> so excuse, being frank, mm-hmm. okay, I identify as a black woman. I'm not running around here saying, oh, well, I'm mixed with Blackfoot Indian and I'm part Swedish and ain't, ain't nobody got no time for that. I'm black, okay? I did. So if please pull me over, I'm black. Black right. and the black, black, black. But so I can't help but notice, even when you start watching television shows and commercials, how you will see they're pairing more and more black women with white men. And then there's this underlying message that they're pushing on us that black men don't want us. And then when black men get successful, they they run off and they get, you know, an other or they, you know what I'm saying? But it's not true, though. If you go look at the numbers of really highly successful black men, there are more of them that marry black women. I've been married to their black woman, you know, since the beginning. Their black woman is who helped them, you know, or they were able to help each other grow and develop. They're just not as loud and as noisy and they're not being pushed in the media. So that's number one. And then you, I can see some of my sisters buying into it and I'm trying to work against it. I'm like, y'all, all black men ain't bad. It's a lot of really, really good black men. My daddy has been, my mom and my daddy have been married. Um, this year is going to be 37 years they've been married. Hmm. I ain't never seen my daddy cheat on my mama. I ain't never seen my daddy sleep on the couch. I ain't never seen my mama cheat on my daddy. I've never seen them being fighting. I ain't never seen disrespect. You know, he's always taking care of the bills, taking care of us, loved us, like protected everything that's supposed to be. My cousins, my grandpas, my uncles, like I'm surrounded by good black men. So I come 
constantly see this narrative that they're going in film and on television and commercials that somehow the black man is against the black woman and i and there are definitely some black men that are out of pocket sometimes and i wish that they would watch a little bit more of what they're doing and what they're saying on their public platforms i'm of not going to deny that but there's no one to highlight good black men that are cheerleading all the black women that are bigging us up you know that are supporting us that are love you don't see you don't see that it's like frontline news you know what i'm saying you don't see the way you see the internet coming down because this one black man said something okay well where are all of y'all to raise up the other black man or these 10 black men that have said something great and sold into us so i i feel like there's an underlying narrative to destroy our family the power of the influence is in the woman period it just it is what it is and so if you can get, if you can destroy the woman, you can destroy a whole community, you can destroy, destroy a whole race, right? You can destroy that household. It, it goes on and on and on. So if they can make us feel like black men are against us or black men don't love us or black men don't care about us, essentially we're gonna start to split as a community. We're gonna start to split our households. We're gonna start to split our families, right? We are, and, and we're going to lose power. This is my belief, right? Mm -hmm. Even whenever you look, even with politics, you look at it, you look at this goddamn black people, we mm -hmm. stick together when we go out and vote with it's enough of us to push somebody, you know, into whatever position or house it is that we want to be in. And so if we're if we're now fighting amongst each other and we're divided, we're losing our power. And at the end of the day, we're stronger together than we are apart. So, I mean, I just, I could go on and on and on about this. You're but spitting I, I really, gems. <laughs> spitting gems. I, I don't, it's, it's just a thing, you know, like in the media, they're trying to push it like black men are against us and black women are angry and bitter baby mamas and stuff. And I'm like, I know so many good black men. I know so many good black women. And, but you don't see us being accurately portrayed. And like, now that I've said this, y'all that are listening, Start paying attention to these commercials. Start paying attention to movies. Start paying attention to shows, even on a television show. If it's a highly successful black woman, you'll notice that even they're partnering her with a man that's not black. Well, you got Scandal, you know. She's with uh, the yeah. president of the United States, who just happens at the exact same time there's a black president. Uh, at the time that it comes out, they put out a white president for her to be with. Right. So, so that's just one example. I, okay. just, I just feel I just feel like it's loaded. I don't want to feel like I don't want to be out here sounding like I'm saying they have to get us. But I mean, at the end of the day, this is a narrative. They're trying to break up our households and our communities. And if I can get you to believe something and that's your perception, then that becomes your reality. And it's just not true. So that's another thing that I do enjoy about social media. Like there are so many people dedicated to pushing positive images of black love, black couples, black families. And again, I'm not opposed to interracial dating and interracial marriage. I think you love who you love, love yeah. but there is something wrong when you're looking at your brother or you looking at, you know, a sister and you have these negative thoughts that automatically come into your mind because of what the media has been putting in there on a subconscious level for so long. When you watch this series, the, these four episodes or whatever it is, uh, please contact me. We can talk privately. I would yeah. love to hear your takeaway to see if you saw what I saw. And then there's a couple of other things in there they sprinkled in there that made me feel a little like, okay, what's going on here? So I would love to hear uh, your thoughts on that. Um, Absolutely. Can I, can I say something? Sure, sure. sure. Go ahead. This is, this is to my, to my ladies, to my sisters. Okay. Like be careful with your mouth. There's so much power in the words that you speak. Power really is like life and death. It really, really is in your tongue stop saying that there ain't no good black men there are plenty of good black men if you start speaking it and if you start focusing on what you want instead of what you don't want it is going to come he will appear there will be a plethora of them i am surrounded i'm not even talking about black men i'm related to men that i meet like colleagues men that i meet at conferences at events there i'm surrounded by good black men y'all they are they are there you cannot buy into this narrative that the black man don't want a black woman, that the black man want to hold you down. It is not true. I have had so many 
positive interactions with black men. Like, yeah, have there have been a couple of funky toes in there? Yeah, there have. It, but it, it overall, happens. if I'm going, <laughs> yeah, but overall, if, if it was a hundred of them, 95 of them would have been great to me, accommodating to me, wanting to love me, wanting to support me, wanting to care for me, wanting to stand in the gap, wanting to help me with whatever it was that they can. So ladies, we have to be really, really careful and make sure that we're not speaking curses on our sons and curses on our nephews and curses on our fathers and our brothers and on our lovers and on our spouses. Because if that's what you're spewing out, that's what you're bringing to yourself. You speak life on your situation. You speak life on those brothers. You speak life on those men and watch them turn around. Y'all men ain't that Jake, men ain't that hard. They want to make us happy, whether you believe it or not. They want to make us happy. So if you can reaffirm it in a positive way, they're going to give you more of it because it makes them feel good. I, I, I was speechless. <laughs> I was speechless. Uh, King Ashley, and how can people who want to work with you, who want to collaborate with you, who want to partner with you, what is the best route to go, go about that? Um, for media, email us at jjones at ashleyannsevents.com. Um, if y'all want to just come to some of the live sessions, the classes, we have chill scope sometimes too. We're not always about the business. Uh, follow me on Instagram at King Ashley Ann. If you want to get free social media, um, social media tips, if you want to get free content ideas, if you want help with your marketing, text the word coins to 31 31 31. Text the word coins, okay, plural, to 313131. 31, 31. Text the word coins to 313131. 31, 31. It's going to send you a little link. Push it, put in your name and your email, and just like that, you're part of the kingdom, and you're able to start getting 100% totally free marketing and sales ideas and things to build your business at least once a week. I try and um, have free stuff Friday for the kingdom and I send all kinds of free stuff. We always giving away laptops and cameras and just stuff to help you make uh, some money. That's, that's how, that's the best way. Now, when I, when I text this coins, are you going to know it's me? I don't know. No, <laughs> I, I, I don't want you to tell on me because I'm, 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 I'm about to text it right now. I'm not going to tell. I'm not okay. Gonna tell. Okay. Okay. We'll keep it between you and I. <laughs> King Ashley Ann, I know that we're going to have to have another conversation, maybe three or four, uh, because I'll be honest with you, uh, over the last five years, I have seen a lot of trash, a lot of fake um, gurus in this era, area. And so I know the difference between what they say, wheat and tear. And uh, in, in this space, there's a lot of people that are charging you, whatever it is. And then once you get inside, whatever that world is that they've created, there's nothing there. It was all imaginary. And so now you're out of $100. Now you're out of $300 and you didn't really gain anything from it. I already know because I've already, I've already tried your products. I already tried your free things. Thank so you. I already know that you are the real. That's why you're on the, on the platform. So thank you so much for being the real. Thank you for showing up on the Black Equity Podcast. But I have a sneaky suspicion we're going to have to do some more series together because I think there's something powerful with a, uh, with a divine masculine energy meets a divine uh, feminine energy. And when those mm -hmm. two can co-create together, there's no stopping it. Uh, so I look forward to figuring out what we can co-create together. Absolutely. I'm excited. I'm so excited for being here. I'm game to come back any time you know business conversation cultural conversation i'm i'm here for it i'm here for us um y'all we gotta have more of this because there's so much negative stuff that's coming against us as a people so i just salute you for everything that you are doing i know it is tireless work i know sometimes people don't appreciate it they don't understand the value and what it is that you're bringing and what you're creating in the space that you've built for people like us. And I'm just, I feel like I'm blessed to know you, blessed to have the opportunity, and I'm so excited to be able to co-create anything. I'm, I'm with it. Thank you so much for coming on the Black Equity Podcast. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.